Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas is one of the famous Oasis class of cruise ships, which pretty much, Glenn, I think you'd agree with me, are like floating resorts Definitely. at sea. Yep. And the best way to explain it is that they're split into seven different neighbourhoods. Um, which is absolutely incredible. So this week on Planet Cruise Weekly, we're looking at everything to do within those seven neighbourhoods on board Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas. Now, when she was first released, she was the largest ship in the world. And this was all the way up until 2016, when Harmony of the Seas took that title. Now, she can hold 6,452 passengers, I know. And in my opinion, it's one of the most exciting cruise ships around. I pre-warn you, there is an awful lot of things you can do on this ship, so if we miss anything, let us know in the comments below. But before we get into the episode, please can you make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the subscribe button next to it. It's simple. It's ding, dong and done. So first place to start will be the Aqua Theatre. 2,000 water nozzles, a hydraulic laden pool, and detachable rope ladders. Literally, you're going to see uh, you know, divers and acrobats uh, coming off in pairs from 60 foot up. Uh, they'll flip around on trampolines and really show off their impressive flexibility. And of course, be warned, if you sit near the front, you could well get smashed. Now, there are two 43 foot high rock climbing walls and a zip line that sends passengers flying over the boardwalk from one side of the ship to the other. There's also the exclusive surf simulators, and these are big with Royal Caribbean and very exciting. Now, who'd have thought you'd get one of these on a cruise ship? There's also a basketball court, which hosts a never-ending stream of games. There's a mini golf course and an enclosed ping pong area. Now, there's a three deck, 1380 seat Amber Theatre offers multiple staging Broadway style musicals. And in addition to this, there's always a rotating tribute show. Now, this could be Motown one week and maybe a tribute to the Beatles another, but there's something always for everybody on the ship. Adjacent to the Amber Theatre is the Entertainment Zone, and this is home to Studio B, which includes an ice rink for skating during the day and in the evening, where you can watch professional ice skaters uh, really show off in these wonderful extravaganza shows. Plus, dependent on what cruise sailing you're on, it also hosts cooking demos during the day, which can be a lot of fun. Now, the On Air Club is the Royal Promenade, and it plays host to karaoke nights. On the boardwalk, you'll find the Carousel, a free old-time circus-style ride. Although, if you're a big kid like me, you'll probably want to have to go more than once. Now, you'll also find on the ship two video arcades to keep all ages occupied throughout the day and the evening. Other venues include the Adults Only Comedy Live, which features local comedians drawn from where the ship is sailing, i.e. if you're in the US, you get more US comedians, in the UK, you get more UK comedians. Now, Jazz on 4 is the Jazz Lounge, and here you can listen to live jazz most nights. Um, it's a small room, decked out like a speakeasy. Really, really cool, got a really nice vibe. And just beyond these venues, you'll also find the casino, one of cruising's largest. And it's home to slot machines, extensive table games, including blackjack, roulette, craps, and Caribbean stud poker. My favorite type of poker. Mm. Uh, there's also a bar and lounge area and a poker room. Mm. And those three main pools are divided into several distinct pool areas, main, beach, and sports, as well as the H2O zone water play area for the kids. The majority of adults stick to the aft end of the ship in the main pool and the beach pool, though both pools are open to all ages. The main pool has a tiered arena style seating on one side, so there's no worry about getting the seat when you want to sit back, relax, and take in views of the pool itself. Across the main pool is the faux rock lined beach pool, which features loungers partially submerged in the water. One of the pools that's most popular with families is the sports pool, and this is where you can do water aerobics and pool volleyball. Plus, if you've got kids, they'll really enjoy the H2O zone. It's a colorful aqua park ruled by a giant water spraying octopus, as well as a splash pool. There's also a shallow pool and a lazy river pool where you'll see Glenn lazily soaking his way around. Uh, you can also get complimentary frozen yogurt right by the pool. Just what you need. Mm -hmm. Glass covered solarium features a pool which is filled with seawater. It's a great place to relax at night gazing at the stars. Allure has two huge cantilevered hot tubs, one on either side of the ship adjacent to the solarium. A third tub is located by the sports pool and another covered hot tub can be found in the H2O zone. Now, of course, you are on a huge ship which also has a huge array of shops that you can choose from, Glenn. Nice. An example of some of those uh, that are featured on the boardwalk includes Pets at Sea, 
Uh, this is where, for a fee, you can build your own stuffed animal. Kind of thing my girls absolutely adore. Uh, there's a kids' clothing store, there's a, a sweet shop, um, and Zoltar, the enigmatic fortune teller trapped behind glass. Uh, I know that this ship seems huge and probably seems like it'd be really, really easy to get lost, but don't worry because there are wayfinders located throughout the ship and these are touch screen digital signs that help you get around the ship and make sure you get uh, to the various activities and locations in time. It's really simple, it's really interactive. And you'll use them a lot. You will, <laughs> you'll need to. Whether it's being right in and amongst it with the rising tide bar which floats between decks, testing a late night cocktail in the trellis bar while the lights surround around you in Central Park or the wipeout bar perfectly positioned between the ship's surf simulators so you can watch everyone take a flow rider, there is something for everybody. Blaze is the ship's dedicated nightclub and it welcomes a variety of dancers from good dancers to rubbish dancers, um, and it shows a family <laughs> dub dancers exactly. Yeah. It shows a family disco, uh, and on other nights actually, it's exclusively reserved for the teens, which is really encouraging. It's why Royal Caribbean are so multi generational. There's also uh, Bound Stern, which is a classic pub uh, that has quite a few beers on draft as well, encouragingly. Then there's the Rising Tide Bar, which we mentioned before, and this is right in the middle of the Royal Promenade. Uh, you're very much on display here as the bar rises up and down, literally. It's a bit like a bar on a lift. Uh, and if you fancy some bubbles, there is, of course, the Champagne Bar, which serves just champagne and martinis. Nice. Moving on to Boleros Lounge. Now, this is a Latin-themed lounge with plush seating and themed decor. It makes a good spot for pre- or post-dinner cocktails, on Air Club is where you'll find televised, televised sporting events, karaoke, bingo, and various quizzes. Dazzles has a regular party band. The picture window backdrop with views of the boardwalk means you won't be disappointed. And there's often 70s styled parties there. The Sweet Lounge is split into the Coastal Kitchen, and this has a self-service buffet area at the back, well-spaced chairs and tables dotted about, and a low, long bar in the centre connecting you to the Coastal Kitchen. It's a light, bright and roomy place, and open 24-7. Now moving on to what's available for families and kids. Now there's a strong emphasis on family and you'll find lots of family focused events which might include movies, art, dressing up and even participating in science experiments. There is also a talent show at the end of every cruise that parents are encouraged to attend as well as early evening family most discos nearly every single evening. Royal Caribbean splits its Kids Adventure Ocean program into the following age groups. You've got the Royal Babies and Tots Nursery, which is open to kids from six months through to three years. And inside there are two rooms, one a large soft play area and the other a quiet room for napping that has eight cribs. Now it's staffed by talented professionals and offers specially designed programs for babies and toddlers. There is a night nursery, but it does come at a cost, but well worth it, of course, if you want a little bit of mum and dad time. Now, if you're traveling with an infant, you can pre-order Huggies, diapers, wipes, creams, and Gerba organic baby food to be delivered right to your stateroom. Alert also has four strollers on board, and it lends out to families, of course, free of charge. Aquanauts gets a fun, bright, open space. This is for three to five-year-olds, and uh, this comes complete with a slide and a tunnel. Royal Caribbean has partnerships with Crayola and with Fisher Price, which means there are plenty of really colourful toys, games, and supplies for you to get stuck into. Plus, you can also request a mobile phone with a speed dial to the room should you want to check up on your little one. So Explorers are between six and eight years of age. Now the Explorers get more of a sports-based programme of activities as well as time-controlled access to gaming equipment. Some of the things kids can get up to are speedball, learning circus skills, taking part in talent shows and of course arts and crafts. Voyagers then deals with children between 9 to 11 years of age. And there's loads of role play type games like Secret Agent as well as science based activities. They also play sports both inside and out. Um, and with parental consent, Voyagers get to sign themselves in and out of the programme. Adventure Ocean features a science lab and a theatre which screens daily movies and plays host to the end of Cruise talent show. Also in the area is one of Allure's two arcades, which features the typical array of enticements, including the first-person shooters and grab-teddy-with-a-claw games. 
Moving on to the teens. Now they're classed as 12 to 17 years of age and the tweens are likely to have a structured program of activities including rock climbing, competitions, dodgeball and dance revolution as well as barbecues and movie nights, open mic nights, talent shows and scratch DJ Academy. The older teens like Glenn have a looser set of suggested activities which might include theme nights, uh, pool parties and teen dinners as well of course as karaoke, um, the Wii and also basketball competitions. Teens get their own area, which is a really big bonus. And this consists of three rooms. You've got the living room, fuel, and a dedicated video arcade. Now the living room is really just a chill out, kind of relaxation spot. The staff remain more of a background presence. They organize competitions. They make sure that nothing untoward takes place in the disco. Right, now fuel consists of a DJ booth and a dance floor. The teen centre is open each night and the teens can come and go as they please. The video arcade consists of the usual array of shoot 'em up and car chases, as well as Guitar Hero. Allure's main dining room is split into three different sections, but all feature the same menu. The three sections are called Silk, The Grand and American Icon. Now in Silk and The Grand you can sit with the same group and get the same waiter each night. But in the American Icon, you can choose My Time Dining, which means uh, between set times you can attend and find a table. You know, as you please. As you please, exactly. In cruise terminology, it's basically open seat dining. The options are varied and you shouldn't get bored with a variety of different options of food in any of those three main restaurants. Now then there's Sorrento's. Now this is a pizzeria. Here you can get a complimentary slice of pizza during lunch, dinner, or in the late hours. Or there's one of my favorites, the Boardwalk Dog House. Now here's a great place to sink your teeth into a hot dog. There's five different varieties of hot dog here at the All You Can Eat Sausage Station. Johnny Rockets is a 1950s style American diner and its menu features fresh made to order hamburgers, sides, uh, shakes and desserts. Everything really you'd expect from a 1950s American diner. Then there's Park Cafe and this is a kind of casual Central Park restaurant which serves up hot paninis and build your own bagels for breakfast as well as custom made salads and sandwiches throughout the rest of the day. Delicious. Allure's Solarium also features a buffet breakfast and lunch venue. Windjammer Marketplace is a self-service buffet and to be honest, I could have every meal here. Azumi on Allure offers two different sides of the restaurant. One side offers hibachi and the other side offers sushi and a Japanese cuisine menu. Sabor is an a la carte Mexican restaurant. The food is a mix of tacos, quesadillas and yucca fries with more interesting dishes such as mole, short ribs and pan seared red snapper. Sounds lovely. Next up is Chops Grill, which is also in Central Park and gives you the choice of porterhouse, filet, veal chops, halibut, and much, much more. Now, the ship's wine and tapas bar, Vintages, is a great place to while away a warm evening with cozy seating and quite a nice selection also of alfresco tables for you to enjoy. Plus, it never seems to get crowded. No reservations are necessary which is great and the tapas is mainly Spanish cuisine and the wines are available in two and five ounce servings as well as by the bottle. Glenn, this is your kind of place. Oh yes, hola. Then there's Giovanni's Table, the Italian traditional restaurant and 150 Central Park, which is a handcrafted gourmet experience. It's carefully and artfully crafted with a multi-course tasting menu created by James Beard award-winning chef Michael Schwartz. The final two are Chef's Table and Samba Grill. Chef's Table is a five course meal available for just 14 passengers on every night of the cruise. It's more of an event than just a restaurant. And the event starts with champagne in the library and a meet and greet with a sommelier and fellow diners. The dinner party then relocates to the Diamond Lounge where you'll find a long table and expansive views over the Boardwalk, Aqua Theatre and Horizon. Samba Grill is an adult only restaurant. In the day, it is the Solarium. At night, it turns into the wonderful Brazilian restaurant. Gauchos bring you all you can eat sirloin, bacon wrapped chicken, fillet, lamb, sausage, and pork. In room dining is available around the clock and is free most of the day. And throughout the day and into the evening, you can choose from pizza, hot and cold sandwiches, and salads. So no, one has, no one has a salad on the cruise. Oh, I have a salad on the cruise.
With over 37 different categories of state... We're not going through them all, are we? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We haven't got time. Uh, with over 37 different categories of staterooms to choose from, there is sure to be a room to suit everyone. Now, the Oasis class of ships are the first to offer inside virtual balconies, so guests can enjoy uh, the feel of having a balcony with the unique concept of it overlooking the boardwalk or central park. It's basically a video wall which kind oh, of shows real-time footage, doesn't it? Now, yeah. for those who want the ultimate accommodation, why not go for a loft suite? Inspired by modern city apartments, these two-storey rooms are something special. Featuring a top-to-bottom glass window, you can experience the wonderful views of the ocean and passing scenery from your living room area or bathroom. Other stateroom categories include interior, outside balcony, and of course, the suites. Allure's Vitality at Sea Spa is pretty large. 29 different treatment rooms with a lot on offer, including rooms for couples, uh, mud treatments and couples massages, a medi spa, a large beauty salon, and even a teens only treatment area. Allure's Gym has a wide selection of ellipticals, uh, stairmasters, treadmills, free weights, uh, kinesis wall, and also private training rooms. It's a fantastically well stocked and well used fitness space, and you'll also find the most diverting running track. The two lanes nearly make a full circuit of the 1,180 foot long ship, and just 2.4 laps equal a mile, which shows you how big the ship is, because yeah. I remember the days where it was like five laps for five a mile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Will mean a mile. It's huge. So, there we have it. Everything to do with Allure of the Seas. Not really, mate. Probably missed loads out. The ship's a beast. It's massive. Yeah. We need a 10 hour show. Quite right, we would, wouldn't we? Yeah. So, if we have missed out something that you really love, then do get in touch with the comment section below and let us know because we do love to hear your feedback. Don't forget as well to share this video if you of could. Um, you know, spread the news about Planet Cruise Weekly. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, for myself and me. We'll see you soon. Bye. Hi everyone, thanks very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe below and remember to click the bell to get those notifications turned on. And if you're looking for more fantastic travel content like this, then click on the videos to the right, it will be really, really informative. Or you can click on the Planet logo to the left and go to our website for some really fantastic goods. Thanks for watching.